this night by doing warfare. How many of you knows that proclamations are weapons of warfare? I mean, we, 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 we beginning this night to make announcement. In every battle of the warriors, there's always a declaration. There's always a proclamation. We want to make some announcement in the realms of the spirit. And that is going to put the enemy where they belong to. Make no mistake, you didn't come to listen to Simon. You have come for battle. Somebody hear what I'm talking about? The first proclamation or announcement we are about to make this morning or this evening is what I call I'm coming out announcement. I'm coming out announcement. You're not going to get tired standing. I'm going to keep you standing for some time before I ask you to see. But you're going to pray. I'm coming out announcement. We are looking at Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 12. Media team, help me. You are wonderful people. Can you put your hands together for the media people? They are excellent. My God. In Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 12, it says, Therefore prophesy. Prophesy means proclaim. It means declaration. It means announcement. It says prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. Mm. I will, not you, not your father, not Pastor Caleb, not Pastor Mecca, not any human being. God said, I'm going to open your graves. And not only that I'm going to open your graves, I'm going to cause you to come up. That's the first movement. I'm going to cause you to come up. And I'm going to cause you to come out of your graves. And the third dimension movement is that I'm going to bring you into, into the land. So there are three dimensions of movements that your destiny is about to experience as we make proclamations this evening. Destinies that are buried. They are going to come up. That talks about resurrection. We are going to resurrect every buried destiny. Everyone whose destiny has been buried. Your marital destiny. Your financial destiny. Every destiny that has been buried. Our first dimension is to command them to come up. Then the, third, the second dimension are destinies that are resurrected, but they are still hanging around graveyards. They're still in the graveyards. Somebody might have come out of the grave, but is still tied down in Egypt. In grave years. So it's one thing to come up. It is another thing to come out of grave years. The second dimension of proclamation. Is for us to call out every resurrected destinies. To come out of their grave years. I declare this night in the name of Jesus. That God will cause your destiny to come out of every grave year. And the third dimension are destinies that are already resurrected and they are out of graveyard but they are parabolating around life. They've not been able to find their place. They are like a square hole, a square, a square rod, a square peg in a round hole. They've not been able to hit to their place. Destinies that have not come to its destination. 
just hanging around, loitering around sources, watching others succeed while they are just expecting and they are not receiving anything. That's a, sec that's a third dimension. And I want you to open up your mouth right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready for this? I want you to open up your mouth and say, Oh Lord, my God. I didn't hear you and say, Oh Lord, my God. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, my God. Cause my graves to open. Bring me out from every spiritual grave. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and pray right now. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Cause my graves. The grave of my destiny. The grave of my marriage. The grave of my finances in the name of Lord Jesus. Every buried aspect of my life. Every buried marriages. Every buried destiny in this place. Lord, as we clap our hands together and pray, O oh King of glory, prophetically. We command every spiritual grave. Open right now. We command you come out. I command your destiny. Let the spiritual grave, let it open right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every power that unlocked your destiny, every power that unlocked your business, every power that unlocked your marriage, wherever altar that it has been locked, in any coffin that it has been locked, come up in the name of Jesus. I command that spiritual grave break loose right now. Come out of your grave. Kalando sheke sobre lidia. Ende zopeke zobedia. Likata kabaga zopre ludia. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus, let the power of the Lord break every spiritual grave. And I command you come out in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your hand and say, Oh Lord my God. Oh Lord my God. Cause me to come out. Cause my marriage to come out. Cause my destiny to come out. From every graveyard. From every Egypt. From every bondage. Open up your mouth and make that declaration. Put your hands together as you pray. And say, Lord in the name of Jesus. From every graveyard, from every graveyard, Kaladol Zegezu, and take a palagazul here. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every every destiny that are hanging around, locked up in the wilderness, in a place of unprofitability. I command in the name of the Lord Jesus, come out of Egypt, come out of bondage, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Liko sakadaya. Endo zike sege badulia. Lando zike sobre dulia. I'm here to declare today. That this destiny shall come out of graveyards. You shall come out of your graves. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will find your place. You will find your destiny. Liko sakadaya. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Lift up your hands, declare, and say, Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. Bring me into my destination. Bring my destiny to its place. Bring my business to its place. Bring my marriage to its place. Listen to me as you're clapping your hands and you're praying, things are shifting for your own accommodations right now where they said there is no place for you God is shifting things for you where they say that everybody every space has been taken God is making space for you as you clap your hands and declare that with a voice of triumph the Lord is shifting things he calls a vassia is being removed and Esther is finding his place. A Mordecai is finding his place. A Haman is dying right now. Malago shege sopre dulia. Endo sike sopre telege boshka. There shall be space for you. 
There shall be space for you. There shall be space for your business. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bones shall find his bones. Flesh shall find his flesh. Space are being created for you. The power of God is all over you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Galagosiki. Ekosiketakabaya. Lindosikatayalaba. You are coming out. You are coming out. I proclaim in the name of Jesus that you are coming out. Your business is coming out. Your marriage is coming out. Your health is coming out. And you are coming into your place. You are coming into promotions. You are coming into elevations. You are coming into your destiny. By the power and the glory of God. We do battles in the realms of the spirit. We shift the unmovable. We move the unmovable. We command the space. Be created for you. Now in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on do it better and say hallelujah. The second pro pro proclamation and announcement we want to make is to all your pharaohs. All your pharaohs. As we are standing here, there are all powers that have vowed. They said they will never let you go. They said they will never let you go. They said they will never let you go. In the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 18, the Bible talks about Pharaoh. God was sending Moses as he sent me all the way from Cape Town. As a voice of the mighty God, the harbinger for your re re release at this hour. He said unto him, the Lord God of the Israel, of the Hebrews. The Hebrews here is talking about the RCCG Rose of Sharon. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? The Lord God of RCCG Rose of Sharon had met with us. Come on, he had met with us. And now let us go. Let every Pharaoh that have held down your life, held down your marriage, held down your business, held down whatever that belongs unto you in this meeting today, every Pharaoh that have held you down, they shall let you go. Every Pharaoh in my father's house, uh, let us go right now. Open your mouth uh, and make the declaration. I command every Pharaoh in my father's house, uh, every Pharaoh in my business, uh, whatever that represents Pharaoh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, by the power and the voice of the Lord, by the mandate of the Almighty God, I command you go. I command you release the destiny of the men and women. Release their marriages. Release their finances. Release their promotions. Release their healings. Every power that have refused to release them will drown you in the red sea of the blood. Will drown you, will suffocate you in the pool of the blood of Jesus. We declare every pharaoh holding this destiny sir, at ransom i announce unto you that this is your time of emancipation this is your time of freedom this is your time of re re release in the name of jesus i command you come out of the hold come out of the power come out of the hold come out right now malago shagaza egeso pradulia we break every chain. We break every hard labor. We break every situation, every power, every cage of the enemy that have put your destiny and ransom. We break that chance out of your life, out of your destiny, out of your mind, out of your business, out of your destiny. I am announcing to you that they are not able
to destroy your destiny anymore. I declare right now, let the owner of the Lord carry the evil load. Every, every body that Pharaoh has put upon you, every touch master that have been anointed and appointed to officiate your suffering, to officiate your losses, to officiate your sickness, to officiate your destiny going down. I come all the way from the city of Cape Town by the power and anointing of the Lord. I decree, let that chain be broken. Let that stronghold be broken. Let that mountain be ruled. The stone that said your destiny will never resurrect. I command it in the name of Jesus. Break out. Be rolled away. Be rolled away. I command your marriage come out. I command your promotion come out. I command your health come out. I command your fruitfulness come out. I command your next level come out. I command your destiny come out. All your destiny help us. Wherever they are, let them begin to remember you. Let them begin to encounter you. Let them begin to remember you. One phone call this week uh, shall change your destiny, shall change your business. Uh, I break that power. Every evil hands uh, that have held your destiny bound, uh, I command it right now. Break loose. Uh, Thank you, Lord of hosts. In Jesus' name we pray. The last announcement that we need to make is directed against those men and those women who are planning evil against your life. Who are imagining mischief to come upon your life. I'm taking that proclamation from Psalm 21 verse 11. Psalm 21 verse 11. Everybody read it. King James. Every, I want you to read it like mass choir. Because we are doing battle already. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Everybody read one ago. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischief device which they are not able to perform. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I am here to announce to all evil men and women in their satanic altars, planning evil against your life, planning evil against your destiny, planning evil against your marriage, planning evil against your children. We announce from this altar today that they shall fall. They shall fall. Their, their evil shall not work. They shall be disappointed and frustrated. In the name of our Lord Jesus, their proclamation shall not destroy you. Their divination is paralyzed. It shall have no effect in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come and lift up your hand as I declare. That it will not succeed. I will live and not die. My wife shall live and not die. My husband shall live and not die. My children shall live and not die. My business shall live and not die. My vision shall live and not die. All of us shall live and not die. I frustrate every attack of the enemy. Somebody clap your hands and make that last proclamation. In the go sege sopeliga and to seek a sepratulia. Randa gaza takaya. Randa gaza predogaza. Ataka sopelige sulia. Atazo prelika paya. I see you coming out. I see you coming out. I see your business coming out in a new dimension, in a new level. I see your hair springing out in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is an emergence of a new season. Emergence of a new season. Emergence of a new season. New domination. New denomination. The power of God is over you. You not die. You shall stand by the power of the living God. 
Lift up your hands and declare hallelujah like a thunder. Declare it once again hallelujah like a thunder. And so shall it be. I say so shall it be. Every altar in your father's house have heard your voice. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? As we are right here, right now, some yokes are breaking. Some demons that failed in their assignment, they are being punished in their coven. Because they couldn't do what they were assigned to do. Shout hallelujah, Jerry. Come and shout hallelujah, Jerry. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together and take your seats. We're coming out. I don't know about you. I said I'm coming out. Look at next person sitting next to you and tell them, did I not tell you I'm coming out? Coming out. No devil can hold me anymore. No altar can hold me. They used to try but no more. Because they are meeting with frustration. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yesterday we talked about getting provoked. And I know that you are already provoked. But it is possible to get provoked. And not know the right thing to do. It is one thing to get provoked. If you're only provoked and you don't know the next thing to do, your provocation will be a wasted passion and emotion. So I want you to pay attention in this day too. We're coming out by engaging God's system. That's what I want to talk, you, talk to you about. You're coming out by engaging God's system. Not by manipulation, but by understanding the systems of God and engaging it. The weakest point of the devil is the point of your obedience unto God. If you come to a place where you understand the systems of God and you apply yourself to it, you will see how weak the devil is. There's a title of the devil that is called Prince of Darkness. Which means it can never be prince where there is no darkness. What empowers the prince of darkness is darkness. When there is light, there's another prince. If you are in medical line, you will understand that most of the antibiotics drugs, they were not designed to kill the virus. They were not designed to kill the virus. They were only designed to destroy the environment that makes the virus to thrive. And that's mucous environment, weight environment. So the antibiotics dries up the environment so that the virus can die on its own. So many times in the realms of the spirit, your warfare should be all about taking away darkness from your life so that you can disarm the prince of darkness. Please follow me. I'm going to take you to a very nice place where you'll be the boss of the devil. The devil's master. We're talking about systems of God. Let's quickly read Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 1. Quickly. He said, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham and he said, Behold, here I am. Then the next verse comes up. That's verse 2. 
everybody read. And he said, take now. Somebody say, take now. Underline that. Take now. Thy son, thy only son, in case you're confused, Isaac. Whom thou lovest, and gave thee into the land of Moria, and offer him there for a boiling offering. What did he say? A burnt offering. In other words, make a barbecue of your son. God loves barbecue. So do I. If Abraham had boiled Isaac, it would have been a western sacrifice. But he said, roast him, make him a burnt offering. But it got to be in one of the mountains. So there are many mountains at Moria. But when you get into Moria, there are many mountains. But don't take your son to any mountain. It got to be a mountain that I tell thee of. Mm. Then in verse 3 says, And Abraham rose up early. That talks about readiness to do the will of God. He rose up early in the morning and sat on his axe and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And clave the woods for the burnt offerings and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, somebody say on the third day. How many days are this program? Pastor Mecca is in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, he said then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place at far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, after he had seen the place, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the Lord will go yonder. And worship and come again to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that that's the first place the word worship was mentioned in the Bible. So Abraham is not only the father of faith, he is also the father of worship. And according to the law of interpretation of the Bible, we were told that in any place where there is first mentioning of a particular truth, only in that place can you find the basic meaning of that truth. And whatever you glean out of that place is applicable to every other place of further mentioning. That's why some of you have Bibles that talked about first mentioning and further mentioning in the studying of the word of God. So only in this place can we understand worship. But before I get into talking about worship this morning, this moment, I want you to understand that the Lord Almighty do have systems. He said, and it came to pass. The word I, it came to pass is a statement of accomplishment. And it came to pass. Genesis 22 verse 1. And it came to pass. It's a declaration of an arrival. And it came to pass. Look at somebody and it came to pass. Because there, there can never be and it came to pass unless there is thus says the Lord. It can never come to pass if God did not first of all declare it. Whatsoever you have received that did not first of all came from thus says the Lord is manipulation. 
if it got to be and it came to pass, there got to be, thus says the Lord. In the book of John chapter 3, verse 27, the Bible says that a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above. If you received it, when it did not come from above, the Bible says you received nothing. You can have something and still think that you have something, but because it did not come from above, the Bible says you have nothing. So many people have husbands and wives that didn't come from above. And after 10, 20 years, they find out that they did not have anything. Somebody came, received jobs that was not from above. And after investing all their lives, they discovered that what they thought they had, they did not have anything. All they have been having is nothing. So the word of God says a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above. You have it in the now, but what you have is called nothing because it did not come from above. For it to be a valid and it came to pass miracle, there got to be a thought, says the Lord, that initiated the move of possession. Is that everybody still with me? So Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. We are still there. Let's take up another thing. It said and it came to pass after these things. Somebody said after these things. That's the next slice that we're looking at in that verse. After these things. When you walk with God. You need to understand that God is systemic. God is systemic and he is the God of process. He created the entire time reign and he embedded in it process. Under the eight, under the heavens, nothing happens without following process. If it got to happen on the time reign, it got to follow process. Beyond the heaven, which is the spirit realm, this can happen instantaneously without going through process. But if it is under the heaven, it got to follow process because our God is a God of process. Our God is a systemic God. So it will pay you tonight to understand the systems of God. We need to understand the systems of God. The first thing that you need to find about God is that if God want to give you anything, the first thing that we do is to declare his promises over your life. Every move of God begins from the declaration of the promises of God. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. And thus says the Lord. Each time God wants to move, he first of all declares the promises. The second dimension of God's process is that God will always take you to the end of the promise and speak to you as though you already have it. Before ever he now bring you to the beginning and say let's begin the journey. Is everybody hearing what I'm talking about? The first process of God is that God has to give you a promise. He has to declare the promise to you. And then he take you to that place and show you the end of it even when you have not begun anything in the end. He took Moses onto the hills and showed him the patterns of things in heaven. And he brought him down on earth for him to begin what God has started. There is never a thing that God has promised you that God did not end before ever he gave you the promise. Every promise is that God has given to you. He ended it before ever he declared it. When God gave you a vision of a marriage, he ended it in the realms of the spirit ever before he stepped into time to begin it. 
whatsoever God had promised in your life, whatsoever revelation and vision that God had given to you, he ended it before ever he stepped down into time to begin it. So if God has entered it in the realms of the spirit, the enemy cannot destroy it without you. The enemy cannot stop it without you. The devil knows that whatsoever God has proclaimed in your life, there is no way he can stop God in fulfilling what he has already declared. The only way he can stop it is by stopping you and effecting the process. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? That's God's process and that's how God works. So he said, after these things, he spoke unto Abraham. He said, I'm giving you a child. And from this child, you're going to get a nation. 25 years have gone. Abraham trusting God for the promises of God. And yet it looks as if that nothing was happening. The womb of the wife was dead. The sperm the, 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 the organ of most of, of Abraham was already dead. Yet the promises of God seems as if that it was not coming to fruition. Everything was working against Abraham. But here in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, the Bible said, and it came to pass. Somebody said, and it came to pass. Against every odd in your life, what God promised you will come to pass. If you will cooperate with God, if you will step with God, if you will stay with God, if you will be ruggedly committed unto God, irrespective of what your eyes is saying, irrespective of what the devil is saying unto you, irrespective of the legislation in the community and in the nation, if you will stick unto God, God will bring that promise into manifestation in your life. Somebody, can I hear you shout a bigger amen? amen? He made it in Abraham. When there was hope against hope, when Abraham had no hope for it, God still pulled it through. People were mocking him. People were making jest of him. And Abraham still stood with God. Until God pulled that promise through. I see God's promises in your life. I see them becoming a reality. Every stagnation in your life. That is telling you right now. That what God said in your life. Will never come to pass. That devil is a liar. If you stick with God. It's going to come to pass. If you stand with God. It's going to come to pass. Against all us, let all the enemies gank up against you. God will make them part of the process of bringing the manifestation of that particular prophecies over your life. Lift up your hand and say, what God is doing in my life, no devil can stop it. No devil can stand it. And the devil cannot nullify it. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Open your mouth and pray in the spirit right now. Over all those promises in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth. Come on. Pray in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I trust you. I see those promises coming to pass. I see your glory coming to pass. I see my womb opening right now. I see space being created unto me in impossible places. I see the move and the manifestation of God over my life in the name of Lord Jesus. You have declared a promise over my life. You have shown me the revelation of the end that you have already intended unto me. Now that I'm beginning to walk with you in understanding, in revelation, in consecration, in walk, in prayer, in vision, Lord, in the name of Jesus, every opposition shall become a position for the manifestation of the power of God over your life. Malagado Shegezulia. Your Isaac is coming. Your Isaac is coming. You will laugh 
laugh with those who have been laughing at you. You will laugh with those who are laughing at you. They were laughing at him, but God brought forth a result that caused those that were laughing at him to begin to laugh with him. Your enemy shall laugh with you. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream dreams. There's a captivity turning anointing that is coming upon your life today that will cause those who laugh at you to laugh with you. If you believe it and say, Lord, I receive it, there shall be a turnaround in my life. The thought that you're wasting your time following God, the thought that you're wasting your time offering your tithes to God, dedicating yourself unto God, consecrating yourself unto God, investing yourself into the services of God. The thought that you are, you are, you are ignorant or being manipulated by the church, by the crazy way you worship God. But I see an anointing coming upon your life that will cause your enemies to give testimony of the transformation that are coming over your life. In the Gonzaga Superlika, Alagado Seke Sopredulia, Lika Takapakoshkea, come and open your mouth. I see my Isaac job coming forth. I see my Oyaka Taka Sopreligata in the Soperu Kataya. I see my Isaac building coming forth. I see my Isaac, Isaac job coming forth. I see my Isaac fruits of whom coming forth. I see my Isaac being manifested. Keep Allah those seek a Sabbath and test K. Belegosi Gabadia. I want you to understand, children of God. Abraham is a man like you and me. Sometimes we are so much frustrated that we are afraid and we are doubting in our heart if actually the word of God will come to pass in your life. Is there anybody that can relate to what I'm talking about? I mean, you're speaking in tongues. I know, I know you are a prayer warrior. I know you, you are dedicated unto God. You trust God to your bones. But there are some times that doubt creeps into your head. And you begin to act like Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, Abraham, Abraham was just tired of trusting God. He was just tired of believing God. After he encountered the king of Sodom, he, God, God came celebrating Abraham and said, Hey, great man of God, do you know that I am your reward? Do you know that I am your God? I am your reward. Abraham said, eh, 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 Stay there. What use is your promises when I have no child to inherit it? Abraham was frustrated at God. He said, God, your promises, your blessings unto me are useless unto me. Since I don't have a child, that was the way living Bible put it. He said, what use is your blessings pouring into my life since I have no child to inherit it? He said, except this Eliezer of Damascus, a slave born into my house. Was the use of fellow following you? Was the use of all the night prayer? Was the use of all the tithes and the givings in the church? Was the use of evangelism? Was the use of all this commitment? Uh, since you have never given me a child, uh, and I love what God says uh, about it, and I come to prophesy it unto you. God said, "This shall not be." Somebody said, "This shall not be." Oh, I didn't hear you say it again. This shall not be. God said unto Abraham, This shall not be. This shall not be your head. The lesser of Damascus shall not be your head. I know you think that you are stuck with Eliezer of Damascus, but God says uh, Eliezer of Damascus' job uh, will not be the promise. Uh, Eliezer of Damascus' car will not be the car. Uh, the Eliezer of Damascus' job uh, will not be the... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at somebody that said, this shall not be. 
it looks as if it is right now but God said it, it this shall not be it shall not be your final destination it shall, it's just a station it's not your destination something bigger is coming unto you something greater is coming unto you something more refounded is coming unto you look at somebody that said this shall not be right now because right now you look broke. Right now you look as if you're going to die single. Right now it looks as if that you are barren. Right now it looks as if that you will never go to your next level. But God sent me all the way from Cape Town to announce unto you that this shall not be end. It looks as if it is. The members of your family think that you're stuck with this. They are laughing at you. They are chatting on WhatsApp. They are tagging each other. And they say that you are wasting your life following Jesus. You are wasting your life practicing holiness. You are wasting your life being a good boy of God. And it looks as if that all you have is a Eliezer of Damascus car, Eliezer of Damascus house, Eliezer of Damascus boyfriend, Eliezer of Damascus, uh, look, look at somebody that said this shall not be. My God said this shall not be. A change is coming unto you. I said a change is coming unto you. That's a manifestation coming unto you. In this conference, uh, you shall meet with your Isaac. Uh, and Isaac is coming. You have overstayed with Eliezer of Damascus' job. But on this platform today, we release your Isaac. <laughs> You're not going to die in that one room. You're not going to be the most senior one room tenant. And, and, and everybody have packed out and have made you the caretaker of one room tenant. They look at somebody and say, This shall not be. I, I, I'm bigger than this. I'm more than this. I, 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 I can go higher than this. This is not all about my life. It's just a station, it's not my destination. Is somebody crazy over what I'm sharing with you? This shall not be. A sudden change is coming on you. Only prayerful people can sleep as a prisoner and wake up in next morning as a prime minister. That's a sudden change coming onto you. That's a sudden change coming onto you. One phone call this week shall change your life. One contact this week uh, will change the history of your life. Look at somebody and say, excuse me, this is not all about me. I am bigger than his. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am bigger on my inside. Uh, 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 all that you see is not all about me. There are an invisible me that is about to come out. Uh, this shall not be. This shall not be. This shall not be. Your baby is coming. Uh, this shall not be. Your UN job is coming. Uh, this shall not be. I said this shall not be. That's a higher dimension. That's a higher dimension. That's elevation coming unto you. Slap three people and tell them this shall not be. This shall not be. This shall not be. This shall not be. Take your seats. This shall not be. And, and Abraham followed the strategies and the systems of God. And, and, and we saw that Abraham in Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. The Bible said, and it shall come to, it, sh it came to pass. The miracle that was delayed for 25 years was made manifest. This shall not be. This shall not be. This shall not be. After all these things, God was processing him. God was putting him into a system. God was processing him. Ha, ha, ha. And when God was processing him, they thought that he was stuck. They didn't know that God was a, a, in the deep walking. How many of you know that your God is a deep walker? 
<laughs> He's not a, source, a surface worker. The enemy can be painting you black and blue on the surface while your God is in the deep walking inside of you. And when he shall come up, it shall be a tsunami. It shall be a thunderous storming. It shall be an earthquake changing. It shall be a sudden change. They're going to ask you, when did this one happen? How did you relocate? How come that I didn't know? Look at somebody and say, my God is coming up. My God is coming up. You may not see, but it's in the deep, renovating and setting me up. Just like a rock does not break by one strike of the hammer. If you are breaking a rock, the rock is cracking on the inside. But on the surface, it looks as if that nothing is still happening. But after you persistently hammer the rock, a day comes when you throw one home everything shattered it was not that day it had been cracking on inside it had been cracking in the deep look at somebody say my bondage are cracking on the inside keep on looking i'm gonna tell you did i not tell you that my bondage are cracking on the inside look at somebody say something is about to happen something I understand the systems of God something is about to happen when it looks as if that nothing is happening it's a I have not seen ear have not heard neither have it entered into the heart of man what God I say what God and what God Ooh, somebody say what God not my mama not my father not my boss in the office not my pastor what God has orchestrated for me is about to happen something is about to happen I said something is about to happen a job seeker is about to become a job giver something is about to happen a single lady is about to wait something is about to happen the one that is known as barren is now joining Atinental. Something is about to happen. Slap three people and say, Something is about to happen. Don't worry, I'm going to call you to tell you. I'll break the good news to you. Are you still there? Something is about to happen. And we saw Abraham. After these things, the Bible said that after these things, all of a sudden, it came to pass after these things. So, is there anybody that is still in the process of these things? You've not yet hit after these things. You're still in the process of these things. And they are talking about you. You know, brethren can gossip. They can, they can, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they can describe you with your infirmities and your circumstances. Don't you know that sister that is always wearing that shoe that is bending? They use your infirmity to tag on you. But why they are talking about you in a negative portion, your God is in the deep and he's renovating your life. Look at somebody and say, I don't know what it is, but I feel in my spirit something is about something is about to happen and the Bible said it came to pass it came to pass the third thing that you see in Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 I'm still in that scripture is that it said that after he had gotten Isaac I saw something that shocked me to my bones Isaac is already born. The promise is already visible and manifested. And then I heard him saying, and God, God tested, tempted Abraham. That God did tempt Abraham. Pastor Mecca said, what for? Isaac is already here. Why is he testing him again? What's the need? 
The miracle is here. Why is he testing him again? Because I'm not sure it's the test of faith. Because the test of faith comes before the manifestation of the miracles. That cannot be test of faith. Because you don't need faith for what is visible. Faith is a hope and the substance of things not seen. Isaac is here, God. Why test the old man again? What is this test all about? Another thing that confused me was the fact that James was talking in my head. James chapter 1 verse 13 was talking in my head that God tempted no man. I got confused them all. And if you are a good Bible student, you will confuse, you will get confused. God tests no man, yet he tested Abraham. What's happening right here? I begin to study. James 1.13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempt he any man. I am really that God tempted Abraham. And James said, God does not tempt any man. I got confused. I began to dig into the Bible. But then I decided, I saw that there is no contradiction with God. And there is no contradiction with the word of God. It was only about the choice of words. I went quickly into the Greek word of that word test, temptations, and trial. I discovered that in Greek language, there are two different words. Please follow me. We are going to the promised land. There are two different words that was used in the Bible, Greek words, to communicate temptation, trials, and tests. One of them is called pirazo. Somebody say pirazo. Oh, 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 just manage and call it. Look at somebody say pirazo. Oh, I didn't hear you. I, I, I'm going to leave that, that word with you. All through your life, when there is a turnaround in your life, you're going to call me and tell me it's pirazo. <laughs> pirazo! Pirazo is a Greek concept that describes the infliction of pain and evil in order to test or prove the faithfulness of a person. Pirazo is a concept of using evil to subject a person to try his character and his resolution in what he believed. I discovered that this is not God. The God I know, he doesn't pirazo you. God does not tempt you or test you with evil. I don't know the God that can gather all the mosquitoes in Lagos in one room. And then he will push you into that room to find out if you trust him for divine healing. I don't know that kind of God that will subject you to sickness to find out if you believe in healing. That's not my God. Look at somebody and say, that's not my God. Oh, I didn't hear you say it with audacity and say, that's not my God. My God does not peer us old. He does not use evil to tempt anybody. He will not mess up around your business because he's calling you into the ministry. Some people have that ideology. They say the reason why my business is messing up is because I have the call of God. Really? 
that's not the God I know. The God I know is the God that is calling Pira and he will tell him launch into the deep. And when he launched into the deep, he caught abundance of fishes in the midst of his frustration. And while he's looking at the abundance, he said, do you choose me between the fishes or to work for me? That's the God I know. The God I know does not use evil to test you. You need to know when to bind the devil. You need to know when God is at work and when the devil is messing up your life. Because whatever you accept, God cannot deliver you from. I got to bind it and declare it illegal before heaven will declare it illegal. You need to know that Pirazo is not God. He does not Pirazo anybody. He's not the one that killed the ten children of Job. It was not God that made the business of Job to go down. It was not God. That was the devil that left the presence of God. And he organized the thieves that stole and destroyed everything that Job had. Talking to you about the protection of God over your life. The richest man under 24 hours became the poorest man. Because the devil had access unto him. Pirazol is not God. Can I hear you say it again? Pirazol is not God. The trial is Pirazol. It is not my God. The temptation is Pirazol. It's not my God. My God cannot use evil to tempt you every one of you going through that evil you are coming out today i say you are coming out today that marital affliction that abuse in the marriage the lord going to break it in the name of the lord jesus that yoke that inflammation in your body that sickness in your god is not using it to try you it's not the god that serves he's a god that heals every good and perfect gift comes from above it comes from a god who have no light of shadow of casting upon him if it is not good it is not god you need to know when to come out from the midst of the devil I saw that Peter's hole is not God. I begin to search for the next one. I saw the second word. I saw Doki Mazo. Somebody said Doki Mazo. Oh, let me, let me, let me, help me, help me. Help me make my walk very light. Say Doki Mazo. Oh, look at somebody say Peter's hole. Doki Mazo. Oh, some of you, you are not saying it. Are you, what language are you speaking? Open up your voice and say, Pirazo. That, the concept of using evil to test you. That's the devil. But God does not use evil. When the Bible talks about God testing you, what he's talking about is that God is testing you. God is examining you. God is proving you. God is purging you. The right word I want you to take out of Dokimazo is purging. It is a concept that describes the type of test which suppress good from evil. God can Dokimazo you. He can separate, purge you, purge you, cleanse you, purge you. Think about purging draws from men's house. In the book of, of, of John chapter 15 verse 2, the Bible said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges. That word purge means dokimazo. God purges you to bring forth result. He purges you to bring forth fruits. He separates that the draws the, 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 the mess upon your life for you to produce more. I see God purging your life in the mighty name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, that's what God was doing with Abraham. Abraham had come to a place of success wherein he have achieved result in the promise that God gave to him concerning Isaac. Now God wanted to take Abraham to a higher dimension wherein he can move up to another level of blessing. 
And God said, before Abraham, I will take him to higher dimension. I got to prove him. Listen to me. Doki Maso talks about God proving you before he placed you. It talks about God testing you before he positions you. God does not just take a person and put him there. God has to test you. He has to approve you. He has to prove you. He has to purge you for what he wants to give unto you. He will never place a man until he has proved the man. And that's a system of God that we're talking about here. Some of you in Rose of Sharon, that's the process that you are going through. But you don't understand the difference between the devil testing you and God testing you. The test of God ends up in promotion. He purges you for more fruits. God purges you. He documents you because of the next level that he wants to give unto you. When the Bible said, and God tempted Abraham, it's talking about proving Abraham. And that test he gave to him was not a test of faith. It's a different kinds of test. I'm going to launch you into it. Listen to me. There are guys that are stagnated in this house. The reason why they are stagnated was not because of the devil. It is because of what I'm talking about. They came to a particular level of success. But they have never moved to the next level. And God sent me to help you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Remember that the past of the joss is like a shining light. That shines brighter and brighter. Onto the perfect day. There's nothing you have today that God does not have more to give to you. He's a God that increases you more and more. Come and say more and more. Come and let me hear you say more and more. Jesus said, the tree that bears fruit, God will do kimazu. He will purge it so that it can bear more fruit. That's a system of God. And that system is already in your life. Don't allow the devil to deceive you, to have claims that he is the one putting you where you are. The devil is not the reason why most of us are where we are. We are where we are because we are failing the test of God. And listen to me quickly. Listen to me. I want to show you this quickly. Listen to me. He said he tested Abraham. What test was he giving to Abraham? What test was he giving to Abraham? It was not the test of faith. It was the test of worship. Let me say that quickly. Somebody said not the test of faith. It's the test of worship. The test of faith is when God is testing your confidence to know whether you believe him for what he has promised you. That's the test of faith. But Isaac is already here. And now the test is not whether he's going to give him Isaac. The test is to see what he's going to do with Isaac. After God has blessed you, that's a test of worship. That's a test of worship. The test of faith is to find out your confidence before ever he released the blessing. That's the test of faith. But the test of worship is after God that bless you, God rose back to see what you're going to do with the blessing. Ask somebody and say, what are you going to do with the blessing? Or stand on your feet and declare it and say, what are you going to do with the blessing? God has blessed so many people in this house. You are blessed of the Lord. He has blessed so many people in this house. The test that is stagnating you is a test of worship. Not a test of faith. God is watching what you're going to do after blessing. The prodigal son passed the test of faith, but he failed the test of worship. So many of us are passing the test of faith, but we are failing in the test of worship. Because worship is not singing in choir. That's not really what worship is all about. You can sing without, being, without worshiping. Worship is not singing. Worship is not even service. Worship is giving God what God wants. When God wants it. Where God wants it. 
and how he wants it. Somebody lift up your voice and say it quickly. Worship is giving God what God wants. Where God wants it. When God wants it. And how God wants it. That's what Abraham called worship. Take your son. Your only son. That's what God wanted. Take it now. When I want it. Go to Mount Moriah. Where I want it. And how I want it. Make a barbecue of him. When Abraham was going to Mount Moriah. To give God what God wants. When God wants it. Where God wants it. And how God wants it. He said, I'm going for worship. There's something God wants in your life. There's something God wants in your marriage. You can turn your marriage into worship. You can turn your business into worship. You can turn your entire life into the system of God. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I want to worship you. Open your mouth and make that a prayer point. Lord, I want to worship you. Lord, I want to worship you. Lord, I want to worship you. I want to give you what you want from my life. How you want it, what you want, when you want it. Lift up your hands. I want to pray with you quickly. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring forth your anointing to deliver your people. Every stagnation in this house, People that have abused the last miracle. People that have wasted the last miracle. People that have rebelled from the last miracle you gave to them. Lord, let every stagnation be lifted from this house today. Grant them another chance. Grant them another chance. You brought back the prodigal son. After he fell the test of worship. Lord bring back everyone. That have fell the test of worship in this house. Those who took your miracle and ran away. Those who became unfaithful after being blessed. Those who became too busy for you. After being lifted. And now they are stagnating. Lord they are coming out right now. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. I decree a new season over their lives. I decree a new move of God over your life. That from this particular day, every hold over your life is lifted by the power of God. The hand of the Lord shall come upon you this week. And there shall be elevation for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever that have caged and clamped you down, you are coming out right now. In the name of Jesus. Listen, tomorrow, I want you to come with your own oil. We want to pray. Pastor, can we do that? We use oil here. Get your oil. We're going to anoint you. Tomorrow is anointing service. Every yoke that has been holding you down, God is going to lift it up. Come with your own bottle of oil so that you can go home with it. We're going to pray over it. Listen to me. Last night, a guy saw me. The notice that I came into Nigeria, he sent me a message. He said, I know you don't know me. Of course, I didn't remember him because it had been almost 26 years. By the way, next month, I'll be 30 years preaching the gospel. He said, I am the junior brother of that lady God used you to raise from the dead in Ajegule. I know you will not remember me, but we remember you every day in our house. And you know how that lady came back to life, anointing oil. The child died and we anointed the child. The dead child came back to life. 
God has stirred it up on me that that's how I'm going to leave you tomorrow. I want you to come with your own bottle. That dead business shall come back to life. That misbehaving husband, he will become normal. Because you're going to take a handkerchief, anoint it and put it under the pillow. When he sleep and wake up, he will become normal. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? That business shall move forward. In the name of the Lord Jesus. All you want to do for me this night is go home. Repent before God. Of every way you have received the blessings of God. And you have walked away from him. I said, Lord, this next miracle. This next test of worship. I'm not going to abuse it. I'm going to take you to another dimension of my life. Put your hands together and celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the man.